I think it's a great opportunity today as healthcare organizations are looking for ways to provide a more consistent and cohesive experience to their patients. There's a great opportunity for them to carve out costs, remove silos, and by that, um, in that, provide better um, solutions for their patients, as well as um, use technology to reduce the burden on the staff. And one of the ways that we're seeing healthcare organizations do that is really looking at technology solutions more holistically as opposed to point solutions, which is a really effective way for them to reduce costs, provide better staff experiences, as well as better patient outcomes. The thing that I'm probably most excited about is there's been so much buzz around AI and all of the sexy things that it can do and how it's really gonna transform the space. But what I think I'm most excited about in terms of budget constraints are the boring things that AI can do. The things that can make our healthcare system today whole, the paperwork, the administrivia, the, all the things that we just don't have time to do so that patients can get better care for a lower dollar value. And so really bringing more care for a lower cost to the American people is what I'm most excited about. So, you know, I think as we look at this particular population and we look at resources, I think resources are continued to be stretched. So anything we can do to try to help mitigate that situation, especially with the geriatric population, um, when we think about the ability to help um, guide uh, both providers and patients in their ability to kind of look at uh, some trajectories for their health and make decisions appropriately. I think that would be a huge help to be able to offset some of those uh, constraints due to resources. Well, for us, uh, it's been an exciting time. You know, we continuously are actually winning contracts and you know a lot of wins in multiple states. You know, we are actually our service lines are into a lot of units with behavior and mental health, with population health, healthcare workforce, and and uh, digital health, and a lot of this, right? Um, so we are our focus is our primary customers, government to start with. Of course, we work with payers and providers and the life sciences companies, but it is an exciting time for us, you know, of course, you know, we are um, not just because we are, we are, by the way, listed on NASDAQ, we're a publicly traded company, but uh, it has set us on a good path of success with continuously winning these contracts in multiple states, you know, and that's where we are. So it's, it, I think the journey is going to continue. Healthcare is something that, you know, it, it is only going to go forward. It's not going to go backwards. So if they're going to be opportunities, they're going to be funding, uh, you know, and I think uh, you just have to, you know, uh, Keep your, uh, uh, keep your focus and uh, make sure that you, know, you continue the journey of winning. I think one of the things that we're doing as a company um, at, at Teguar is looking at how can we do things better, right? So maybe the revenue's not there that we expect it at this point. We're looking to see how can we optimize what we have? How can we give better customer service? So I think that's one, one area that we're gonna see a lot more attention paid to, to give customers that great experience so that we can continue to grow together. Um, as far as, a pipeline to consider, right? I'm director of sales, love to talk about pipeline. We're still seeing that. So I think there's hope for the rebound to come at the, uh, towards the end of the year for people getting back, opening their wallets, spending money to get back into uh, uh, the, the revenue track. Well, I, you know, I've been always hopeful in healthcare. Uh, there, is, there is always opportunity there to improve that, you know, patient care and also improve the member satisfaction, patient satisfaction. So one of the things that I see that's making me very helpful you know, hopeful here is obviously, you know, social determinants of health is one, but then also generative AI. Application of generative AI within the healthcare is really going to make a lot of differences. It's going to improve member engagement, obviously. And then I think the second thing it's really going to improve is provider satisfaction. So which will result in better quality care, right? Efficient care and a great satisfaction within the member and provider world. So yes, it is exciting times. I think things will change. Uh, using you know, technology in healthcare will definitely help uh, you know, take us to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really, technology is leading the way. I don't know if there's ever been a time where it wasn't tough, right, in, the, in this world, in this space that we operate. But technology, both for capturing more data about users, as well as technology that lets us unlock and tap into what we can do with that data, is really paving the way for the future. So what we're seeing is more companies leverage things like wearable data, glucose monitor data, to learn more about users, to improve both preventative health, and care for chronic conditions throughout the care journey. So really impressed by what we're seeing people doing with the data that we supply in a fire compliant manner 
and really what that's unlocking in terms of overall care. So I know it's, uh, it's tough times right now, but really we are continuing to deliver better service in terms of healthcare, and we're able to do it at scale in a truly personalized matter, right? So that's, uh, that's the future that I'm excited about. Yeah, so look, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel. The way, the way I see it is in the energy that's being created behind value-based care. Um, it's picking up steam. Uh, it's going to be the true representation of uh, getting the U.S. healthcare system into a better state. Uh, we're seeing a lot of energy behind it. Lots of technology is coming to enable it. Uh, the advent of rapid improvements in AI and generative AI are certainly going to be a big boost for that. I'm really excited because I do see a lot of clients coming to Cognizant and Trizetto and saying, how do I reduce my administrative cost? Because I want to utilize that savings to invest into generative AI, other technologies that are out there to help me enable my platforms to work with my consumers, my patients, my providers. And so we're actually reducing costs. We're enabling them to invest in Cognizant and in Trizetto, where then we're enabling that platform of generative AI, where it helps them basically enhance the patient experience as well as the provider experience. So that's what we're doing in the healthcare industry today, and we're really looking forward to working with a lot of our customers today. Well, I think in a lot of industries in general, there's uh, a lot of pressures to do more with less. So in, in the healthcare industry, what we're doing is some of the technologies that DT Research is providing allows the doctors to have more uh, patient visits, uh, meet more people um, based on telehealth applications. So our medical grade all-in-ones help them to do that within the four walls of a hospital, but then our rugged tablet lines also help them to take that mobility out into the field and have still be able to meet people in remote places, have these appointments more frequently with people to solve meeting people's needs more with less. Uh, we are really excited by some advances in technology that we think will really help assist in, in one of the areas of, of focus for us, which is RevCycle. And so for us, we're really excited that we can support RevCycle professionals with what we're calling autonomous coding, uh, where, um, where for low complicated, low complexity cases, um, a human may only need to review or not review at all, and they can help practice at a higher level of functioning. And so that, that's one area of importance for us. And we're also excited about ways to kind of support the physician documentation to get it right the first time with, with gentle nudges that are helping to support complete and accurate documentation, Brittany. So two areas that, that we're really excited about in, in 24 um, and really uh, looking forward to uh, working with the rest of the community for the year. You know, as I look ahead, where I think, I feel like healthcare is just coming off age. Healthcare IT is in some ways coming off age. Um, we've had EHRs for a long time and meaningful use back 15 years ago now, almost, started driving their adoption. And everything else has sort of followed suit afterwards. And now we're at this point not unlike when I you know, was growing up in the dot-com bust era, where we had all these great innovations and so on and seemingly limitless budgets, and suddenly everybody wanted to know, well, Hamad, what's really delivering ROI? And how do I actually enable technology solution adoption without spending an arm load to get there? And so what I'm really excited about is really two things, the two aspects to it. One is the number of options to be able to participate in the care of the patient, the devices, the digital therapeutics, the digital health um, um, services, data services, the te technology services, has proliferated and has started also to mature. Like they're actually really good services that have proven ROI and we're starting to see that in industry as they get adopted. And on the flip side, we have um, opportunities now to bring those innovations together in a way that's very sensible. We're very excited as a digital health enablement platform to be able to enable organizations with limited budgets to be able to pull in very many innovations, many innovations that they're interested in, that they're getting pressured to actually implement in their organizations without looking at each one as a different point project that requires a whole set of resources which they no longer have. So I'm really excited by that kind of opportunity to bring these things together. And uh, so yes, with limited budgets, yes, that sounds sort of negative, 
but actually it's a forcing function to make better, more efficient decisions. And so that's what I'm really excited about because that was what 2002, 2004 started looking like. And now look at us today, users of you know, these amazing platforms on our phones, on our, on, our, uh, on our watches of all things, and of course on our computers. And uh, I think we're going to start seeing that sort of innovation and uptake now as well as people become more disciplined about how they bring in innovations into the house. Well, if I come off a little bit of my soapbox, I think that AI is going to be one of those things. Uh, there are a lot of road tasks that clinicians, caregivers, and anyone involved in the healthcare space is spending quite a bit of time doing. And I think that artificial intelligence, uh, Gen AI will be able to help with those things. Uh, activities that often take a lot of time and take a lot of just mental uh, capacity to achieve what often are menial tasks are things that we can definitely uh, put Gen AI and AI in general to address and to enable, again, clinicians and caregivers and everyone involved in that space to contribute to the care of patients and those that need uh, healthcare support. Yeah, so, you know, clinicians are, uh, physicians and clinicians are always asked to do more. Yeah, at the end of the day, we have an older, ager, sicker population with less doctors and nurses. That is an untenable uh, situation. As well, the fee structure from a physician fee schedule continuing to be decreased. So physicians are always asked to do uh, more with less. And, uh, and at the end of the day, this is where virtual care is going to uh, create a dominant factor in how we transform the delivery care model in, uh, moving forward. And, but it's not enough for a virtual care company to say, hey, I can reduce your, I can increase your medication adherence, I can reduce your emergency room visits, I can reduce your hospitalizations. That's great, we do that too. But if the patient still has a chronic condition. I'm still obese, I still have a cardio problem, I still, um, I'm st I have diabetes, right? So what are we doing to improve the patient's uh, state of health that would, all, that would multiply the, the, the savings, if you will, in the, in the context of value-based care? So just because I'm obese doesn't mean I have to stay obese, I can lose weight, but the pa patient engagement is going to be the key uh, benefactor of how we transform uh, the delivery of care moving forward. So getting rid of uh, obesity, just because you're a diabetic doesn't mean you have to die with it. You can't you can put it in remission. Uh, my father was a diabetic. I know the condition all too well. And I know, uh, and I've, and I've seen it, and I've seen it happen. So the, 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 so the outcomes is, okay, I can do all the, I can decrease costs, but I can also improve patient uh, state of health. And that's really gonna be the differentiator in any virtual care company as they partner with physicians on providing a better care model, deliberate care model moving forward. So yeah, it's very challenging times. Um, I, my, why I feel it's my full-time job of engaging clinicians with our sales team in, in Provada to make sure we're on the pre-sale cycle and on the deployment side of the house and on the optimization so that we're, when we're selling our software, we're a digital identity management company primarily, when we're selling our software, we've got to engage end users we can no longer just put te technology in front of end users, doctors, nurses, EVS staff, transporters. They don't have the bandwidth to barely do the job that they're showing up to do. So we need to make sure that we deliver that technology, we understand their workflows and we understand their footprint. So my team, that's our full-time job, making sure we're coupled with the sales, making sure that we address what their needs are and that when we do sell it to them, we deploy them and it's no surprise to the end user and it's a much more seamless transition. And then of course they're using technology, it's efficient for me. Both of those give us security, which is obviously what we aim for. We're seeing a lot of excitement, especially uh, with healthcare systems. And even though money's tight and budgets are tight and they've been tight since COVID and the nursing shortage has driven up uh, the, you know, the rates on nurses and it's just harder to deliver care. But we are seeing that telehealth is really taking hold since COVID and that we are now seeing that people are putting a device in every room or a uh, video camera in every room to be able to deliver that care so that any, any clinician, any physician, any specialty come in and can help that patient or help the bedside from a distance. So if you don't have those resources, having to move a cart takes time.
It takes a nurse having to roll down the hall or a tech to roll down the hall to get that car to the right place. But having a device in any place is going to increase productivity and efficiency of your clinicians at the bedside and really augment them to deliver the best care ever. Well, my hope is, as we see, yes, budgets are tight and it's often difficult to find and attract, you know, high quality talent specifically for front counter positions and things. So those people are often being replaced with self-service kiosks. However, in their haste to roll out these kiosk programs because of staffing shortages, lots of facilities are forgetting the importance of accessibility. But we're here to let people know and it's starting, people are starting to understand that to make sure that it's the most usable experience for all patients, they do need to think about accessibility and that's where we can help through the Kiosk Manufacturer Association and Storm Interface. So I think there's great opportunities for healthcare to increase its efficiency through automation, through artificial intelligence and other forms of machine learning, for example, which are taking hold across healthcare. And that allows us from a cybersecurity perspective to also, also automate the uh, the, the process of securing our healthcare, and that's going to be a major, major step forward. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So Azalea Health actually serves the underserved market, so rural healthcare, so budgets are even tighter for them. Um, and so we try to provide as much value and ROI as possible to them. So one, starting with our platform, um, we actually see a 30% reduction in time spent charting and a 50% reduction in time spent billing. Um, and then if they use all of our products, including RCM, it actually increases to 75% time reduction. So providing that kind of value to providers is really critical during this time, because if they can get that time back, then that's more time they can spend focused on their patients um, and then get home to their families because of all the staffing shortages. But what's really exciting during this time is also all the partners that I see here at HIMSS. Um, and again, going back to the marketplace, I want to plug that in and offer more integrated solutions because that provides more value, um, especially with something like ambient scribing. You know, that completely removes all this manual work that they're doing today. So I'm seeing tons of innovation here and I'm excited to add them to our apps marketplace.